Thank you. Wow, we've heard some really good speakers this morning. I have to say, uh, Marcus told us back there that he was setting the bar pretty high, and he did. So thank you, Marcus, for the added pressure. Um, you know, when we think about the state of volunteerism, there's a lot to think about. And chances are, many of you have been asked to volunteer before. Am I right? Yeah. Is there anyone out there that has never volunteered before? It's hard to see. But if so, I hope that after today's event, you'll consider sharing your time and talents with uh, the community in a very special way. Today we are hearing about uh, how there are so many different ways that people can volunteer. You may have had uh, a personal experience with a particular organization that is very near and dear to your heart. Maybe you've been invited to volunteer by a friend or family member, or as uh, John and um, Dominique shared, uh, voluntold. That happens a lot too. Uh, maybe, maybe you were compelled by a very touching story, much like what Mike Dalton shared this morning. And uh, your heart is just so touched that you have this great desire to make a difference in our community. Or maybe you volunteered for a personal gain of just being associated with a cause. For whatever reason you chose to volunteer, please know that your time and talent is a great resource for our community and helps uh, human services to really provide well-being in our community. So let's think about well-being for a moment. Well-being is something that um, is so needed so that everyone in our community, every person, has access to resources to develop their full potential. And we, as citizens, can maximize that human full potential by helping to support human services that are building well-being. When we look at um, the time of economic times right now, you know, a lot of nonprofits have to do more with less, as well as many businesses. And so one great way that the community can help build well-being in our community is by donating their professional services and pro bono services. Now, there are some regulations with the IRS, what's considered, uh, you know, deductible uh, pro bono services, and, and I'm not really qualified to advise you on those tax benefits. But do know that providing pro bono services and that skilled volunteering has a great value uh, for your time and talents. Um, so, according to Taproot, uh, the 2015 rate for professional services provided pro bono is $150 an hour. So, you have to be using those pro bono services as your uh, professional activities. It can't be you can be a doctor and you're volunteering to paint and get that type of uh, benefit. But no matter what, um, there is a great value in it. And for traditional volunteering, the 2015 rate is $23.07. The Illinois rate is $25.34. And so you ask, well, what does that mean? For a small organization like CASA, we had uh, 134 volunteers in 2015 that donated over 6,000 hours advocating for children in the court system. That translates to around $150,000 of time and value given to our community in trying to make sure that these children find safe, permanent homes. So out of the 302 children we served, we were able to assist closing 86 of those cases. So we're able to leverage that $150,000 that our volunteers provide the community into an even greater savings for our taxpayers. 
the cost for DCFS to place one child in foster care for one month is almost $6,000. National CASA research shows that if a CASA volunteer is appointed, we can save children up to an average of eight months' time in the system. So when you look at eight months less time per child, that's over $47,000 per child that we help close a case on. And when you multiply that by the 86 cases that we closed last year, that's almost $4 million of savings for our taxpayers. So we have uh, a wonderful group of volunteers. We have many professionals. We have doctors and nurses and teachers and attorneys. And we have stay-at-home moms. But um, even though many of our volunteers have professional skills, sometimes they're not always fulfilled just by their career. And so volunteering is a great benefit for them and the nonprofits as well. Other ways that nonprofits can benefit from skilled and pro bono services is by serving on boards. We're a very small organization and we do not have the money for marketing or um, you know, sometimes strategic planning to bring in consultants. So we're always looking to get everything free. And we've been very fortunate to have um, some Caterpillar leadership to help guide our strategic plan in helping us to grow to serve more children. There are lots of ways that you can volunteer. And really, if you kind of think of volunteering as an exchange, you may be able to provide some great need for somebody right now, you know, as a CASA volunteer, as a mentor, with tutoring, in a lot of different ways. But you know, someday, you may be the one who is benefiting from some volunteer. Maybe it's a volunteer ambulance who comes to save you. There are lots of ways that we all rely on the community for our well-being. And so I'd like to have you think about um, some challenges. So if you're an individual, think about how you can use your professional skills to help those nonprofits. You know, go out. If you're not volunteering, search for an agency. There are so many great needs out there that can utilize your services and help. If you're a business owner or a corporation, please consider developing um, employee engagement, volunteer opportunities. You know, if you're thinking, I, I really don't know what to do, my staff and I would be happy to come to your organization and uh, train volunteers to be the voice of children to going through the court services. There are so many ways that you can engage the community, give back to the community, and really make a difference. So as I um, would like to close today, I would like to share a quote with you from Creating a Culture of Life from Cardinal Mahoney. And it goes like this. Any society, any nation, is judged on the basis of how it treats its weakest members the last, the least, the littlest. So please think about that today. And how are you treating the last, the least, and the littlest? Thank you.